Good morning, Bucknutters. It is Thursday, March 21st, 2024. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change. You should have called in sick today and you are watching this as you are getting ready for the NCAA tournament. It's a holiday of sorts in these parts. Sports devotees like myself look forward to this four-day stretch all year and we cannot wait. Though our Buckeyes will not be involved, unfortunately. They are in the NIT. Got a great show for you today, though. Bill Curlick and Mark Porter will be here. All sorts of stuff to talk about, uh, staff maneuverings or not. Lots of recruiting, lots of visitors, lots of spring practice chatter. But first, of course, this episode is brought to you by the spring cleaning champions, Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. Clear out that winter bush with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code BUCKNUTS for 20% off plus free shipping. Hate making a mess? Not to worry. This bad boy is waterproof. Shave in the shower and the bath or in the ocean. Yes, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Spring cleaning doesn't just apply to the nether regions. Get the full grooming experience with Manscaped's signature Beard Hedger Pro Kit and Handyman Electric Face Shaver. Whether you're looking to craft your signature look or clean up that neckline, these are always the right tools for the job. Once again, get 20% off and free shipping with the code BUCKNUTS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code BUCKNUTS at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. I know there's some people who aren't a huge fan of those Manscaped ads, but guess why they keep getting put on here? Because you guys keep buying it. We are joined by Bill Kerlick and Mark Porter. Gentlemen, we will, of course, get your final four picks before we sign off. I will say for me, I have never had a less... Never had less of a vibe on an NCAA tournament and all the teams involved than now. I don't know... uh, just kind of lost the fever. Don't know why that is. But do have the fever for Cruton. Always when these two guys are on here, Bill. You know, start with you again today. Visitors aplenty. Last time we were here a couple days ago, there were a couple guys who we expected to come. They did. Today, you got a couple more visitors. So chronologically, let's start with Tuesday. And Wednesday, for that matter. Guys who have visited this week, your vibes on those visits, Bill and then set up what we can expect today from the red carpet. Well, it was great for Ohio State to get wide receiver DeCorian Moore in for a visit. Um, Still don't think that'll be an easy flip necessarily. Um, I think he ends up at one of three schools, stays with LSU, Texas, or Ohio State. Uh, But we'll see. I mean, the visit went well. So they got him on campus. He as a it and we'll see where it goes from there. Uh, Justin Hill, I like Ohio State's chances with him. I've liked Ohio State's chances for quite some time. Landon Rink, the defensive lineman from Texas. Ohio State is in his big three, and he scheduled an official visit for May 31st, so they've got a realistic shot at that one. Uh, Vernell Brown, I still like where Ohio State is, but uh, the interesting thing is, is that, um, well, not interesting, but uh, Kind of the usual, I guess you'd say, is that even if he were to commit to Ohio State uh, in June when he makes his official visits to the various schools, you got to recruit a kid all the way through the process. Just like Jeremiah Smith, you had to recruit him all the way through the process. So, you know, we'll see. Tyler Atkinson, well, he is a big time defensive and edge linebacker, 2026 from Georgia. Mark and I raved about him when he was an eighth grader at Ohio State's camp and looked like a, a, a sophomore or a junior in high school at that point. He's getting more visits from Ohio State. Uh, he was here at camp. He's going to come back this summer. He's going to come back uh, after that again. Uh, he, he's going to vi- continue to visit Ohio State, and Ohio State is one of his top choices. Uh, Elbert Hill, I, I, I like where Ohio State stands with him generally. He's only a 2026 DB corner, but he's a great prospect. And then um, 
Will Griffin, the quarterback, was at Ohio State on Tuesday. So there were a lot of great visitors, a lot of guys at Ohio State was offered a scholarship too. Who's here today, Bill? Today we have a, a big additional visitor. Uh, Alan True, our Midwest guy, posted this on our site actually just a little bit ago. It was, a, it was a, just a matter of time as to when he visited Ohio State, that being Wisconsin safety Cody Haddad. Uh, he committed to Wisconsin January 17th. I had done a couple articles in December and early January on him, and Mark had talked about him. Uh, we predicted he was going to blow up. And he did. He only played four games his junior year because he was injured. He got injured right before the season started and then got back and played the last four Cleveland State Ignatius games. And I believe had three or four interceptions in those four games. And he was great. Um, Ohio State, as I talked about when I wrote the articles, was tracking him and very interested. He then committed to Wisconsin on January 17th. Ohio State then offered him right after that, and he certainly is a guy to be aware of uh, for the Buckeyes, outstanding safety prospect. So he's visiting Ohio State today. Um, Cam Thomas, the linebacker athlete, that I like him. He's a class 2026 kid out of Westchester, Lakota West, visiting Ohio State today. And Adam Guthrie, an offensive lineman from Ohio 2026, uh, is visiting Ohio State today. Uh, Jackson Reynolds, a young guy out of Lancaster, 2027 athlete. And then quarterback Dia Bell, who has got a good uh, offer list. He's visiting Ohio State today. So certainly there are some guys to be aware of at Ohio State's practice this morning. Mark, we talked about uh, Tyler Atkinson. Can you expand that? Yeah. Um, for those of you playing at home, we're putting some video up of Tyler Atkinson right now. Grayson High school. Um, this is Atkinson. Yeah, right. Um, I'm sorry. This is uh, Guthrie. That's Guthrie, I believe. Yeah. I got. I'll get Atkinson. Okay, Atkinson. Talking. Yeah. I Here's what I wanted to say, Bill. It looks like he brought almost nine family members with him on a recent visit. Does that mean he has hit the Naeem offered <laughs> nine visit visitors with me guaranteed commitment level? I wouldn't say that for Tyler yet, but uh, it's a good sign. But, uh, hey, if you watch his video, and I think Mark is uh, queuing up it up now. now. Yeah. Everybody in the country wants this kid. I'll let Mark talk about him more. But, I mean, yeah, here he come off dynamic. The edge. Bill, when we, when we saw him, he was an eighth grader. Right. And if my memory serves correct, he put on a show pass rushing that day. There he is, a middle linebacker, where – he wasn't as physically developed yet, but he definitely had the rockets in his shoes. And you could see it right there at middle linebacker, the way he attacked. Impact. Seven Hill. Um, and so this is the first time I'm peeking at his film really since then. And yeah, rockets in his shoes. We're seeing in two or three plays and geez, oh man, you see him run into the tackle there. Uh, he doesn't carry a lot of weight with him. So that's all converting speed to power, like where he converted the all that power right to that guy's chest and ran right through him. Uh, this is pretty impressive the way he can already do that as a young player. But that was the uh, trait that I remember the most from camp. And, boy, you see him right there just attack those blockers. I mean, puts a helmet right underneath their chin and says, I'm going through you. He hits uh, high. Yeah. I mean. Phew. You know what I'm saying? Some guys some guys try and cut you in half. And then some guys just come straight for your shoulder pads and really think they can kill you. And he's one yeah. of them. The no fear factor there. A lot of kids, do they stick their head in there? Yeah, he's leading the charge with his head on multiple plays here. Um, you're seeing his versatility on these clips. You've seen him at defensive end already. You're seeing him at linebacker. You saw some change of direction there where he was kind of wiggling on the way he's to the spot. Yeah, so yeah, the swim right there, there's a, a savvy move for a young kid. This is a sophomore tape, and you see him beating blocks in a different uh, different ways. But, boy, what a stonewall when he hits people already. I mean, there's the third or fourth shot where yeah. they, they say knockdown tackler or drag down tackler. He's a knockdown tackler. Exactly. The, the train ends when he hits him. Also, Bill, and let's comment on this. He plays at Grayson High School in uh, Georgia, which is, you know, as good as it gets. Um, I really love the idea of getting a kid out of Georgia, too. It's, you want to talk about – harming the opposition while bolstering your, your crew there. Mark, of the Ohio guys that we've talked about, the Cody Haddad's and the questions there, who jumps out at you? 
Quick, can can I God. offer one more thing on, yes, uh, uh, off, uh, on uh, Atkinson real quick? There is a reason, as you guys just saw and talked about watching that video, that Ohio State told Atkinson, you are a three or four down player. You know, you're not just a, a, a rush guy. You know, you saw him lining up at middle linebacker. You saw him coming off the edge. Uh, they told him, you know, we see you if you come here as a three or four down player. You aren't coming off the field much if you come here and get on our defense. Stud, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, so I like what Bill brought up about the Cody Haddad. I saw him uh, on tape early in the year and was kind of put on to him by some coaches. And we, I think there was something in the boarding house about Ohio Shoe uh, getting in on him early. And there wasn't much reaction from the fans. I remember reading that that day, and it was like kind of fell on deaf ears. And it was like, yeah, just another name that no one needs to know. And it turned out being a name that people needed to know. And I'll tell you why. The physicality coming downhill with Cody is rare. When I saw him play, uh, I was there for a half, and sometimes guys don't do much in a half. Maybe there's not that many possessions. I went back and watched the half of tape, and almost every play was an evaluatable, like, look at this, guys. Look what he's doing. Uh, I don't see many kids at, at the high school age come downhill and be as physical he is. And he has, like, a surety to himself when he comes down and he, like, submarines people were – he doesn't feel like he's going to get juked. You, you see a lot of kids come down and they kind of give that little breakdown. We're like, oh, boy, I better be careful. He just sails right through the mesh point. Whatever whatever he sees, he hits. And I, I have to think that maybe there are a few times he missed because he is so aggressive. But you watch his highlight tape. He's a heat-seeking missile. Um, pass coverage is great. The speed's great. You see him do the things on uh, film that show off his speed running across the field, stuff like that. So we were on him early, and, and it – it's kind of paid off. The Wisconsin offer kind of showed up, and he may have committed before he realized how good he was or how much he was going to blow up. Um, I, I think meet with Luke Fickle and some of those guys can be intoxicating. They may have heated him up to, to uh, commit, but I don't think that's going to be the end place he ends up. And then people are talking a lot about Adam Guthrie, and I've checked out the film a few times. He could be an offer by camp season. He's got the size and length, but he's not totally there yet. He's still that young pup. Um, it's a good bet that in the weight room and after an off season, you're going to see more pop and snap out of his film next year. And it might be an easier offer, but as a sophomore, he looks like a sophomore. And I could say the same thing for Sam Greer. Sam Greer has a lot of talent, a lot of, uh, length and a lot of attributes that are highly coveted, but he's a developing young kid. You got to remember these kids are 16 years old. They're not fully developed. They're, uh, the, the puppies with big paws. And they both kind of look like that on the film. And I'm throwing Sam Greer into the Guthrie category, even though he already has the Ohio State offer. But if, if he doesn't get offered, I would think that those would be the reasons why. And it's just maybe a matter of time. And I don't think Ohio State's going to pull the trigger on kids until they know for sure. And I think Guthrie's the type of kid that'll you'll know for sure. Just give him a little more time. Just give him a little weight room development. The film's good, but it's not excellent, I guess is the way I would say it. Bill, we expected to have a show today talking about a possible running backs coach edition. Um, there was some vibe earlier yesterday that DeMarco Murray might be the guy. And then lo and behold, his alumni and current employer, who is his alumni? That's not the right use of the word. His alma mater, that's correct, and his current employer, uh, the University of Oklahoma, re-upped his contract and DeMarco is staying. I don't think money was ever going to be the biggest thing for Murray, considering the fact he's already financially independent, thanks to Chip Kelly and the Eagles low X years ago. But we now head back into the unknown, Bill. Your thoughts on the situation? Were you surprised that DeMarco didn't come through? Where do you expect it to go? Are you concerned, et cetera? There's a lot of visitors coming in here. If a running back visits and doesn't know whose position coach is, does that hurt the process? Not surprised that Murray stayed with Oklahoma. I had been told that um, uh, while Ohio State would be an enticing place to look, it was not going to be easy that Oklahoma was going to do probably what they needed to do to keep him, and they did. Um, you know, Gillespie – he got a raise 
at Alabama. That one is not going to be easy if they decide that they would want to go in all in in that direction. I don't uh, think, you know, so really, I think we're looking at probably at other options now. Um, I think Brian Dale continue to look, you know, you got Scotty Graham out there that I still think perhaps could be uh, uh, the guy. You never know. Pepe Pearson's still out there. We know there's interest there uh, on his part. Um but I don't think there's any doubt still that Ryan Day is going to get a good running backs coach. No, no doubt in my mind at all. I mean, it's too good a job for him not to get a really good running backs coach. You got the job and you got Queen Sean Judkins and Travion Henderson your first year. That's a great situation. So, no, I'm not overly concerned to answer your question. Yeah, uh, Ryan Day is actually coaching running backs right now and talked about how he spent half an hour on one play yesterday. And I think, Bill, you bring up practical application of the current situation. Importantly, uh, Mark's you know elder son, though he's a quarterback, I think they're both quarterbacks, he could coach the running backs at Ohio State this year and do a hell of a job just by sitting there and getting dudes water. I mean, this, I'm serious. This is, I, like I said, I keep saying, I say this on every show. I'm a draft geek, a nerd. And I think these would be the two highest rated running backs possibly in the draft this year. Um, the kid from Texas blew his knee out in November. So, you know, very impressive. But Mark, how do you feel about this? Here's what I'd like you to comment on because you've talked to uh, as many assistant coaches as anybody. It's the timing is bad. That's my concern. Middle of spring ball is not when people jump ship. I mean, it's either before spring ball, after spring ball. Uh, those are natural transitions. This is an unnatural transition. And it's not like uh, you're going down to the convention where you were a couple months ago where everyone's got their hand up and everybody needs a job and all the chairs are changing. So that's what makes this a little unique. Um, contracts have been renewed in recent time. You know, like you're seeing all these things, these moving parts and why it's so tricky. Um, if it went all spring ball and day coached running backs the whole time, that wouldn't bother me. I mean, that's not the worst thing in the world. There's there's no need to have a running back coach immediately. You know, the, there's not even much recruiting going on in Ohio State. So anything that's going on and it's, you know, with visitors coming in, they set this stuff up all weeks ago and it's coming to fruition now. So, after spring ball is when you might be able to find more candidates. and But I think that's where the timing is off. Definitely. And, um, you know, we discussed this at length. They're going to get the right guy. It's not the kind of thing they need to jump on. Um, let's go. By to the way, I saw uh, Dietrich Sanchez said hello to everyone. Um, most people probably watching this show know, but uh, uh, Dietra and – Daniel, her husband, and Devin will be here this weekend in Columbus. In fact, they are flying out here today for a Friday, Saturday Ohio State visit. So safe travels, Dietra and family, and uh, we will welcome you again here in Columbus with open arms. They'll be staying with the Curlicks. You'll get them at the airport, Bill? <laughs> uh, I do not believe that's That's not that case, far off. But, what uh, yeah, days? I live in northern suburbs of Columbus, and I'm sure they're going to be down there uh, in the campus area. No, they will be closer to High Street than, excuse me, Omaha Steaks, uh, than uh, Bill. Got to tell you about our second sponsor, and I think this will be a little bit less awkward. How do you feel when you get a delivery at the door full of steaks? And I can tell you this for a fact, you feel very, very good. The Omaha Steaks semi-annual sale is here. You get 50% off site-wide and save on mouth-watering favorites by using our deals. Go to omahasteaks.com slash bucknuts and shop the semi-annual sale. You can load up on all the delicious flavor you crave at half the price. Of course, they got steaks, the butcher cut filet mignons, but they also have mouth-watering pure ground burgers, comfort classics, easy prepare meals that are perfect. For busy weekday nights. Plus, you order now, you get a bonus. Eight free Omaha Steak Burgers on select packages when you select bucknuts.com at omahasteaks.com. Visit omahasteaks.com slash bucknuts, like I said, 
Get eight free Omaha steak burgers with select packages when you shop the semi-annual sale. Hurry because this deal won't last long. That's omahasteaks.com slash bucknuts. And I've said this before. Do not be intimidated by frozen meats. They come in good. and It's super easy to execute. So we are going to go over some stuff here. And then at the end, we are going to do a deep dive on Justin Hill. And as you say, everyone's excited to see, you know, the Sanchez is here. Um, interesting. They just did a, uh, I saw Andrew Ivins on um, the recent 24 uh, seven recruiting podcast. And they asked him, he said, the most common question he's getting now is it's Ohio state building the greatest secondary recruits of all time. So the Sanchez should be, have another thing to be proud about for their son being talked about uh, with Naeem offered already as being, the best corner combo in the country, top one and two, top six players in the country, and you throw in Tavy and Sinclair and the rest of the crew that we expect, and we are excited about that very, very much. Okay. Those of you playing at home. Let me get the volume out of there for you. There you go. Got you. I got it. Um, this is the beginning of the review of Justin Hill, uh, edge outside linebacker from Winton Woods, 6'3 or 6'4". And, Mark, I'll let you take it from here. We're going to give you about 30 seconds of this because it's premium. I was going to say, I'm going to go to the end of it because I'm not going to show a lot of the plays. But there were a couple plays at the end of this that were uh, – they're, they're scholarship plays. And we, we knew he was a pass rusher. We knew we could stand up. Uh, we see him playing over the top here. But uh, when I was in college, I, I played against Jason Taylor, the Hall of Fame defensive end for the Dolphins and Jets. And he had a play that's very similar to the play I was going to show you where – he turned and burned, and you see him turn his right here and go back on the quarterback. But this next play is the one I'm talking about. He goes, and I'm like, wow, this isn't a highlight. He just blew by the ball carrier. And then I'm like, oh, no, he's not. He chases down that tailback from behind and hawks him down like he's a 190-pound player himself. I watched Jason Taylor do that in college to a 190-pound tailback who ran a 4-4, and I watched a 6'6", 240-pound Jason Taylor run him down from behind and that's the comparison to justin hill he's got that type of explosive of uh, explosiveness he's got the edge presence uh and then he brings the motor and the intensity to make all that stuff work i mean to, to go and we'll watch a couple where he blows by a tackle i mean he just pull, pushes that guy he's got power he's got explosion Mark, uh, a, yes. i was at that game where he ran that guy down that you uh, had the video clip of, and I was actually on that side of the field at that game, and I saw him run by, and then I saw him, oh, my goodness, as he was running away from me, chasing this kid down. I, I said, he's going to catch that guy, and he yeah, did. That, I think I said he's a rare height, weight, speed huh. specimen, and that's what it is. You don't see 6'4", 230 pounds cruising down the field after a 180-pound tailback like that. In this particular play, the sideline, the sideline stuff, where he's on one side of the field, and he's going to finish at the other side of the field to make the play. Um, he's a stand-up middle linebacker that can go sideline to sideline. He's a defensive pass rush specialist if he wanted to. He is anything you want him to do, which makes him somewhere that Jim Knowles can line up in different spots and hide him and not let teams scheme for him. Dan, I think you saw the question on the message boards. Is Micah Parsons a great comparison? I stopped the film because I know we're not going to give away the whole film on this. but. Right. The, he has the Micah Parsons role. He has the Micah Parsons body. He's got some explosion. I just can't anoint him Micah Parsons until he does Micah Parsons things at the next level. Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. and, and it would, you know, and I, and I we, I'm, all, I'm, I'm the guy who says this all the time. I'm not anointing guys. I'm not going to call everyone Lattimore. I'm not going to call everyone these elite guys in the NFL. But Justin's Hill is a guy that, okay, you know, you have the traits and you have the opportunity. And I like to use this, the range of outcomes for him. One of them could be Micah Parsons like. So yeah, it, it was it was a fun film to do. I, I I can't believe we you know, we broke him down earlier, but it took a while to get to him this year. Uh, I would break down kids like Justin Hill all day and even the Tyler Atkinson film we watched today. Both of those were phew, rare kids. It, Atkinson was a little more explosive running around. He's probably much lighter and he's not as big, so that's why he could probably move that way. But you know, if you watch those two back to back, Atkinson looked like he moved around like a middle linebacker was a safety. 
So, you know, there's your contrast between two great players. And then one somebody, somebody posted that 247 Sports is not showing an offer, high state offer for Justin Hill. Uh, there, yeah, yeah. He uh, is, if you look at his profile on uh, through Bucknuts on 247, it definitely has an offer from Ohio State for Justin Hill. He was offered long ago, and uh, I put that offer in myself, actually. So uh, I'm looking at it again right now. It's there. Yeah, it was uh, March 23rd of 2023, was it not? Mm, don't remember the exact date, but I'll, I'll, I'll trust you on that one. There's, there's some photographic memory for you. Okay, <laughs> Rain, okay, Rain Man. Yeah. Is that right, Bill? I don't know. Uh, um, what, you don't have the time of day? Uh, like I said, I don't, I don't remember the exact look on his, um, I know Ohio State offering. I know I put it in. I know it's in the database. Yeah. Hold on a sec. Let's see how Rain Man I am here. I mean, I just dropped the box of toothpicks. How many are on the floor? March 23rd, 2023. I just checked. All right. Um. Look, ask me to remember my wife's birth date or how old my youngest child is. Someone asked me how old I was the other day, and I literally was like this. <laughs> I used to answer 35 for about 12 years. That's definitely not applicable anymore. I do want to say this um, because I saw this, and it was absolutely tragic. And uh, with the uh, Sanchez is on here, I wanted to pass on condolences. Uh, Trayvon Coles, I believe the young man's name was, was murdered. Um, North Shore football player committed to Lamar. If you watch the news coverage, you could see Devin uh, in the uh, group of dudes who was, uh, you know, commiserating. And it just made me it made me think about uh, that. You know, we've developed this relationship with the family here. It just made me think about how. And I have a child on spring break at the time. Just how scary it is when your kids leave the house. And how much the randomness there is out there. This kid was committed to Lamar. Um, and it's just tragic. Um, hug your kids. I can't imagine what the Sanchez's were feeling. Um, I mean, it's almost like you want to keep your kid inside until they leave for school. But um, I did want to pass that along. Uh, just an absolutely tragic, tragic uh Tragic experience. I, I hate that uh, Devin has to go through something like that and his whole team and that whole family. Um, Dietra has commented on here that Jalen Hurts has taken over the financial needs for the family, which is a tremendous maneuver for another Texas native. I believe Jalen is also a Houston native. So don't want to uh, bring down the show and, and do that kind of stuff, but um, it does bring back to uh, reality how much uh, – Risk there is out there for these kids these days, man. Uh, very, very troubling. I mean, we're, you know, recruiting is really just this glorified discussion of the future. And uh, my guy had gotten himself a scholarship to Lamar, and then, you know, to be cut off like that is just absolutely brutal. So we pass along our condolences to uh, the Sanchez and the entire North Shore football community, et cetera. Um, like I said, I didn't want to bring everybody down there, but sometimes I think you can uh, – have the need to pass that stuff along. All right, a little more on Justin Hill here. Um, why don't you think his ranking is as high, guys? Bill, maybe you want to comment on that. Is it they haven't seen him? Um, Tyler Atkinson's ranked appropriately. I don't think Justin Hill is up yet. Uh, we kind of went through this with Tavian St. Clair, and now he's up where he's supposed to be. Do you expect a meteoric rise? I don't know if I'd say me meteoric, but I expect a rise in it. And I, you know, like I said, I've, uh, when I saw him in person and, in a game this past season, as I mentioned, I was at the, uh, that game that we had the clip from. I, uh, Coach Murphy at Cincinnati Winton Woods told me in advance, you're going to get wild. Yeah, I got wild. Yeah. <laughs> he was unbelievable. So I think um, the more that the evaluators that do the ranking see them, the more he's going to jump. He is he's the real deal. Yeah, I'd like to talk to those guys and have them explain to me what box he's not checking for them. Right. <laughs> or what boxes other guys were checking that pushed them ahead of him, you know, if you really want to get in. And, and I give evaluators a pass because I'm an evaluator and I know we're not always getting it right. And and maybe, like I said, maybe he's 20 or 30 spots away from what he should be. 20 or 30 spots is nothing. 
you know, we talked about that, you know, like it, it's the blink of an eye or whatever. And uh, people get too uptight about the rankings. If you just watch the film we watched, that's all you need to worry about. You know, I wouldn't worry about rankings. I'd, I'd put my money where my eyes have been and what I've seen. And I'll bet on that. And, and I'll do this when Bill and I go somewhere separate times, we both come back and agree with the same evaluation. And the evaluation begins with W. Wow. Uh, mm. You're in good shape. You know, someday I hope to have my sons evaluated with the W. Wow. Yeah. You know, but Mar yeah. Marquise Davis fits into that category where Mark and I saw him at different times. And whoa. Yeah. And Mark's wife, don't forget her. She was yeah. at the game I was at. The Cody Haddad's a great example. I was wow early on and nobody else was. I was like on an island. Like, what am I seeing that no one else is seeing? And sometimes I, Bill said it the evaluators have to catch up to me and see what I've seen and, you know, get the times and the scores. And I talk to coaches ahead of time to give me a lot of confidence and things I'm seeing. So, you know, we, we hope to be the cutting edge. And these are examples of maybe why we are, because we are ahead of the national ranking. So it could be just that we're pushing the envelope a little farther. I, I, and I'm patting ourselves on the back for that and saying that, but this is, you know, we've done this with multiple <laughs> Multiple players where we're ahead, like the St. Clairs and Haddad's, and you know we're talking about them, and it's Bucknut Nation isn't there yet, and now we're catching up. In all seriousness, if you guys get a chance to see these guys before the rest of the crowd, that's what we should be relying on, and we do. This is the grassroots on the <laughs> ground. If you have come through Ohio, if you camped at Ohio State, um, we will have the evaluation for you as good as it can get, and it will be early, early, early. We've been on Sam Greer since he made a special tip in at the uh, basketball state That's tournament. Cool. So it's just another one of your many advantages of coming to Bucknuts and dealing with two experts like uh, Mark and Bill. And uh, Bill, legally, thankfully we got this in here from Mika before the show ended, or I would probably be fined. Any <laughs> updates on Dorian Brew, Brew, excuse me, and Trey McNutt? Shocker. There's a story on the sh front of the site right now about just those dudes, William. Yeah. Um, the story base has in the title something along the lines of McNutt and Brew going through the recruiting process. There is nothing wrong with that, folks. You know, you'd love to get them in the fold early, of course. But the big thing is get them in the fold, whether it be early, middle, or late, get them in the fold and sign them. So they're going through the recruiting process. Dorian Brew was going to commit on January 24th. I fully believe in my mind that he was going to commit to Ohio State at that point, uh, again, in my mind, but he didn't. He decided to postpone things, and now he's going to take official visits. Unless something changes, he's going to take official visits. Trey McNutt has told me that uh, more than once that he is, is going to evaluate schools, take visits, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, he just, uh, he's got Ohio State coming up for a visit March 28th, I believe it is. I'm almost certain. He is going to visit Tennessee uh, right before that. His visit to I State may be March 30th, March 28th or March 30th. He's going to visit Tennessee right before that. He's going to visit Texas A&M uh, right after that. He is then going to drop his top schools on April 8th. And then I expect him to take official visits and make his decision. Um, and, I, and by the way, I, I tend to like where Ohio State is at with him, by the way. But there's nothing wrong with these kids going through the recruiting process, taking their visits and all. Jim Trestle used to say, hey, take your visits. When you come back, you're going to know Ohio State's the best place for you. Uh, you know, I'm, I want to add a little color to that. I'm sorry. Um, Last year, we learned that this we're in a new process, the wild, wild west. And, you know, the old mantra is exactly that. Take your visits. Take your visits. Well, how about, I mean, haven't we discussed that kids are asking for $5,000 to come on a visit? Um, this, there's a whole new reason kids are going to string out their process and not commit. Uh, hats off to Deetra Sanchez and getting her kid committed early because he could be playing all these games right now or, I want to go here and collect 3000 I want to go here and collect 5000 I get 2000 for pass and go over here. Um, you may be giving up uh, 5 10 15 20000 by not taking your visits. Um, is that ethical to go take money when you know you're not going to go somewhere? I don't know. That's part of this new process. And, and the other thing we learned is 
what happened as we closed in on signing day this year, uh, teams started freaking out and they realized that, uh oh, we better offer this guy some more money if we want him because someone else is going to offer him more money. And all of a sudden, if players are smart, and I don't mean to give anyone advice, but your value increases the longer you wait because you become rarer and the spots start to fill and teams need you and they need, they have a need. And we saw kids getting paid on signing day, like no tomorrow. So I don't know how this process is going to change or morph, you know, but I'd be prepared for those factors to change what we normally would say. Hey, kids are just going on their recruiting visits, getting their information, doing their due diligence. Now it's, I think a little different animal. I'll say this and I'll finish with this as we continue to hold the Sanchez's up as the standard bears. That is all true. But once again, I keep coming back at this. That is all short term thinking. To me, what this process is going to do, it's going to highlight the groups of people like the Sanchez's who are not focused on short term. It's going to make it easier to recruit the kids who are more focused on football and their future rather than picking up five grand for going and hanging with some USC cheerleaders. Um, As always, that used to be the thing in Ohio, like the Glenville kids go, take the USC visit and get some sun. One dude never came back. What was his name? I can't remember. Uh, Andre Walker. Yeah. Thanks for, who was He was Andre Walker. Okay, Andre, well, yeah. Someone committed on Christmas, Bill. I know you remember that one. Um, Marcellus. Yeah. Marcellus Jones. I apologize as we go down memory lane here, but to me, This process highlights the groups of people who are doing it right. Authenticity shines, man. You can't fake it. And uh, these coaches are going to know after a while. Keep in mind, we're in the beginning of this process. You're going to start to get a vibe on types of people who are in it for the money and types of people who are in it to get the best development. And by the way, check the signing bonus that C.J. Stroud got. It's a lot more than NIL, okay? Check the check the money you get for being a second round draft pick at that defensive back. It's a lot more than the NIL. So long-term, I think this is going to help Ohio state recruit. You can see who's in it to win it and who's in it to cash in. Now there'll be some guys they probably got to take regardless because of talent. But I was just going to say as a digression, I have thought about that. Like what if I'm a coach and I have an evaluation on a player that I really like him, and he comes to campus and he's a total, you know what? all about yeah. the money, you know, and, I, and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, like I, I, I'm turned off by that. I would get rid of him, but you know, he's going to go somewhere else. And in three years, you're going to see him pop up as a first or second rounder. And you're going to say, this is what my original point is. Should we be evaluating people by their greed for money and mix that with what their football evaluation is? And, and I don't know the answer to that, but I think that's a real tough question where, Man, if, if like, you know, you're saying you're, you're firing a running back coach or you're moving him out because he wasn't getting the recruits you wanted. Well, maybe he didn't like the attitude to some of those guys and made some decisions where these kids showed up and they were all about the money. And I'm just hypoth- hypothetically talking here. And now you don't have the talent on your roster because you were being morally, you know, strong in your beliefs. And, and I just think that's going to be a conflicted thing because I don't. It, it turns me off when, like you're saying, when people say, Oh, I want the 5,000 for visit. I want this 5,000. It's disingenuous. And it, it worries me as a coach and evaluator that I could be fooled when you get on the campus for once you're secure and happy with your money, you got your bag. Uh, Deion Sanders just said it. You don't have the motivation to go get the bag anymore because you were already handed it too early. So as an evaluator, I don't know how to factor this in. And, I, and I'm worried that, yeah, you may throw away towns. And there were reasons in the past that kids were bad and you could have thrown them away and you kept them. But this, this is getting tricky, I think. It's going to force the coaches to really get a good sense of the people that they're recruiting. But, um, and I'll I mean, say how this. Is, how much of it is just a kid, a family saying, hey, we're new to this process and we're just trying to get what we're supposed to get. And we were told that if we go here, we get 3,000. And they're a little naive mixed with maybe it's not greed, but it's just like, hey, uh, we're just trying to do this. And you're like, oh, they look like greedy pigs. I'm just, I'm, this is a, you know, we're walking a fence with this. You know, I get that. Of- and here, it's, here's how I would see it. It's a case by case basis. Like anything yeah, else. Really- everyone, we speak in generalities and in, in the media and stuff. Go. And then when it comes to you, you want case by case treatment, just like I do. Um, but I, I don't see it as, sum that up. Yeah. I mean, I just don't see it as being a huge issue because 
these guys will take it'll take care of itself. You know what I'm saying? The great players will shine regardless. That's not going to be a, a, an issue. Um, it just won't be. I, I, as someone who's done, it, and it's just not. A, this applies to sports. I think this applies to anything. As someone who's been in charge of hiring people, guys who come for the money and stuff. That's short term. You got to play for the name on the back of your jersey as much as anything else. There's an internal pride and in competition um, that gets you over the top. The NFL, man, this is the best of the best of the best badass MFers you've ever seen. Trust me. I covered the NFL for enough time to be in the locker room. You cannot believe what these people look like, okay? If you're not motivated to play, you will get run out immediately. It'll take care of itself. There's a Darwinistic aspect of football that is tremendous. And just in anything. Guys who are motivated to be great. Um, I'm not trying to blow smoke here, but Bill Kerlick is breaking as many stories when we paid him 20 grand as now when we pay him, you know, five year, $25 million contract. Okay. Bill's intrinsically motivated. Athletes are the same way when it comes right down to it. Um, I don't think that's going to be an issue long-term for Ohio state, especially at the top of the food chain where you don't have to deal with knuckle sandwiches like that. All right. 40 minutes. 20 seconds, 4120. That's a minute and 25 seconds so far of free content. We appreciate our guys stopping by. Keep it locked into Bucknuts. Got all the good stuff and then enjoy the tournament, people. Oh, quickly. You want to give your final four picks? Bill, go. I have been so busy that I haven't paid close enough attention to give you my final four, but I'll give you a uh... Uh, my my winner. How's that? I, I'll, I'll go with uh, UConn because I think they're the best team. I'll I'll leave it at that. I don't care who else gets there, but I'll go with them as the winner simply because I think they're better than the other teams. I can't remember a tournament where one team has been thought to win as much as UConn, and so then I get into the position of well, I'm in a pool. I'm not picking UConn because then I can't win. Okay. Um, but like you, but I I'm don't. I'm not in a pool. Great- I'm just picking my winner. Yeah, I don't have a great vibe on someone else than that. I kind of think Arizona's a good team, kind of a sleeper. Mark, you're just give us your champ. Um, I, I would I would be a fraud if I sat here and said I knew anything about baseball or I'd, or I'd even watched or a, a basketball game this year. Um, I am so football centric. When when other sports are on, my brain almost shuts off and says, "Don't you dare try to take in any more sports information." And, and I really don't have a grip. I I wouldn't even. I would just be talking right out of my butthole. You've seen some eighth grade head. basketball. Haven't you watched plenty of I was just to say, you want to know about AAU circuit or the fifth grade AAU circuit? I could tell you who some, you know, big time little kids are. But boy, <laughs> I, I, you'd, you'd have to force me. And if, if I had enough spare time to watch a college basketball game, I wouldn't be good at what I'm doing here. Um, but I, I would be a fraud if I, I mean, when you, when I saw that we had to pick this, I started looking at I the do. Teams. Yeah, and I was like, you're just going to sound like a fool if you try to do this. And so l- let me be good at football and not try to fool my audience with something I'm not. Um, I know, you know, Bill has the basketball background and you're, you're you know, knee deep in it. But boy, you guys found hey, it. Uh, it's like hockey to me. <laughs> didn't your high, your high school still playing, in it? They just lost uh, okay. to uh, Ursuline in the grade eight. Yeah, okay, Ursuline so- went on to the final four. And Ursuline had, I think, three freshmen starting maybe a fourth freshman in there. So they're going to be perennial, perennial good for the next three years. Yeah. I think it's going to be Kettering Alter there in division two. My guy, Charlie Yule bangs three threes last week, six foot eight. Keep an eye on them kids, but we digress and we appreciate it. You guys enjoy the tournament. Have a good one, Buck. Not